Hello there. Yes, Master. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Good to see Amen. you. How are you? We, we are, are doing fine. fine. God is blessing us. Well, um, just so you know, in this coming week, we'll be acquiring the, the uh, uh, telephones and computers, and we'll be getting those over to you uh, very shortly. So you have some more tools. Yeah. Amen. Let's uh let's pray. And uh I've got a few things that the Lord would have me share today. Father, thank you for these men. Thank you for the, the lives of the men and women and children that they touch with the gospel and with the kindness of God and with the truth spoken in love. Help us, Lord, to be vessels of honor so that we can carry this precious gift that you've given us and share it with all because there's more than enough to go around. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for coming, Lord, for us, for teaching us here on this earth wearing a human flesh. Thank you for suffering for us. Thank you for dying for us and rising for us. Lord, I pray that you guide our time together and that this time will help us all of us to be better fulfilling the roles that you've called us to fill in jesus name amen amen, amen. so i was looking at this last week and there are some things that the lord kind of showed me uh this is a picture taken up about 500 or so feet higher than where I am. And uh, in uh, looking out over the valley to one of the nearby uh, mountains. Um, the, in looking at this, as I was talking to the congregation last week, we, we have, and I, and I think this fits us so much right here, Ephesians chapter uh, verses 4 through 15 that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, and that's Christ. And and I, as I was sharing with the congregation last week, the, the Lord has... The word says he has plans for us in Jeremiah 29, 11, to cause us to have success, to give us hope and, and a future. Uh, um, the enemy wants to steal everything we have, as it says in John 10, 10. But Jesus' purpose is to give a rich and satisfying life. And and as I was talking last week, the, the word just kind of came out and, and the love of God came down to us, comes down to us, unconditional, unique, unfailing, precious. And we, we reach up to him. How we reach into the covenant is, is by faith, trusting him and realizing that what he's told us is the truth that we need to hear, and it will direct our steps. And then in that right-hand corner at the bottom, the challenge that we have for we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. We, The world walks according to the circumstance. Um, I'm watching, uh, we're in the United States, we're rolling up for the 2024 presidential election. And, and what I see is, is people who parade around as politicians claiming that they have a relationship with Jesus, but they're doing it to get votes. They're not doing yes. it because they have a relationship with Jesus. They're doing it to get votes. And, and what that teaches us is to walk by our, our circumstances, to walk by sight. Everybody in this world that, that woke up today or will wake up tomorrow um, they have a set of challenges that face them, uh, whether they be small or large. And and the only way that we can face the challenges of our life is 
to walk by faith in him. Because if we look at the circumstances around us, we'll be overwhelmed, we'll be silenced, we'll be destroyed by the circumstances if we don't put our trust and faith in God. So as I was kind of moving through the message, the Lord, the Lord said, how can we possibly do this? How do we walk by faith? How do we walk in power? The beginning of that relationship is that we have to be born again. And, and, and our relationship with the Lord is based on love and trust and holiness. Jesus is our example. He tells us that we that when he was asked the greatest of the commandments, um, and reading out of Matthew 22, 37 through 40, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is Amen. the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then I'm going to talk about tag this bottom one and then I want to talk about a couple things that just kind of um, spoke to my heart in the last week. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead fear the Lord. Turn away from evil then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything you produce. He will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Okay. In this week, a um, couple of people, one that you know and one that you probably don't, but they're, they're very typical of some people who name the name of Jesus Christ. One is the young lady, Mary, who's taking care of her father who wants to go to college. And as you and I talked about, about um, probably a couple months ago or so when we first discussed her is that she's, she always has her hand out and, and, and she's looking for help and and she's essentially begging and and then uh, there's a pastor in, in Africa and I, I'm not going to bring up his name right now but I receive uh, texts from him like um, he connects to me on like like you, Vincent, he collects, connects with me, connected with me originally on LinkedIn. But like he'll call me asking for something to take care of the children and the and the and the people that he's taking care care of as a legitimate ministry. But I I confronted him with this, and it was something that that uh, the Lord dealt with me on early, and and it's the things I admired about you because of the respectful way. That, that you ask for us to partner with the Lord in providing you things like the the resources that we were able to send and the computers and phones that we're talking about now. You're, you're, you're trusting God for those things. But there are people who they seem to be trusting God, God but then they, they're constantly knocking on the door, constantly uh, begging, begging for help. And so I, I wrote to Mary, uh, and I told her, I said that I understand that you want to go back to college, but when you when you are begging, you're you're forgetting something very important. You're you're a, a daughter of the Most High God. You're a child of the King, and you should be going to Him and trusting Him. And this is where it came from for me. Um, I was I was in that I was in those shoes. I I. The first church I started to pastor back in 1989, in a matter of a few months, turned into a homeless shelter. We had, within five, six months, about 100 people. We had men sleeping on the pews of our, of our, in our church. Uh, we had uh, women and children and families sleeping in our Sunday school building. We had teenagers who had ended up on the streets that we had taken into our house with us. So we had about 100 people. And... And I would send out monthly newsletters asking for help. And then one day I got really convicted um, that I was trusting my ability to beg more than I was trusting God. I was trusting my ability to manipulate and influence the people who were on my mailing list more than I was trusting God. And so I made a, I made a point 
to send out newsletters, but never, never beg. I told of the good things we were that God was doing. I told of the souls that were saved, the people that were healed, the folks that were able to get uh, move out and 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 start their lives fresh and new with their own home and and, and get started in life again. But then something happened, and I, I probably shared this with you a while back, but it's worth repeating. Um, we had a hundred people there about, and so that's about breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three meals a day. That's about 300 meals. And we also had um, a, a pantry that was open. Like I've talked about, I really, really, really want to be able to build a building that will give you guys a pantry full of resource so that you can give it out as it's needed. Um, but we had a pantry and, and my, my, in my spirit, if we had two cans of beans and somebody came and they were hungry, we would give one can and trust the Lord to multiply what we had. Well, we ran out. Uh, we ran out of food. And uh, I didn't know what to do except to pray because my flesh wanted to be angry at some of the churches who weren't supporting us. My flesh wanted to write an email real quick or send an, a newsletter out real quick and say, please help us. But, but instead I prayed, <clears throat> we prayed, the whole church did. And we, we had an amazing time of worship. And, and then the next morning, the very first thing that happened was uh, a man who had uh, fought in the Vietnam war um, uh, and had an old um, general motors Cadillac, which is a big old, a big, car and the trunk of the car when he pulled up to the church he backed up to where my office was and we opened the trunk and it was full of meat and and by that i mean probably in the range of about 300 pounds of meat and and immediately i was praising god for answered prayer but but here's what happened all through the day people drove up and brought us food. We didn't call anybody. We didn't write anybody. The Lord told them. And then a local grocery store said, called us and said, pastor, we have to put out food that we're not allowed to keep on the shelves anymore because it's past the date. But if you want it like our bread, please come and pick it up. And then there was a restaurant that they, that they're, they're, it's famous in the United States, but it's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. And there was a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant about half a mile away. And I got a call from from their manager, and he said, uh, "Pastor, we can only keep this food on the on the shelf for so long, and and then we've got to we've got to take it off the shelf, but it's still food and still edible. If we put it in this place uh, uh, out back in a, in a box, will you come pick it up every so often?" And I said, "Absolutely, of course." And so what happened is it got to be this was from about eight o'clock in the morning and it was like watching a miracle and ha- ha- unfolding uh, no, none of the people knew that they were part of a miracle but but people were driving up with bags of food and canned goods and these phone calls were coming in and then uh, got, I got to about um, I guess two or three o'clock in the afternoon and and I um, I took off my faith hat and started worrying again about where I was going to store all the food. And so I was thinking about calling the churches there in the community where we were and see if we could borrow space in their refrigerators. And then I got a phone call. Well, I'm going to set the phone call up a little bit. As I walked from the parsonage where we lived down the sidewalk about, uh, oh, probably 100 meters to the church, to the right of the church was a concrete pad, a rectangular concrete pad, about um, six feet by 12 feet. <laughs> I never knew what the pad was there for. So I received a phone call from a gentleman who was closing his restaurant. And he called me and he said, Pastor, I know you have, this is all happening in one day. He said, Pastor, I know you have a barn there. Uh, on the property, would you mind if I stored my walk-in cooler and freezer in your barn because I have to shut my restaurant down? Amen. And uh, I said, would you mind if we we used it? And he said, not at all. Uh, absolutely, you can use it. 
Well, it it came um, in sections like little panels, and you assemble the panels all together, put the roof on it, and then hook up the um, equipment to the the electric meter uh, or electric fuse box so that you can run. Well, that walk-in cooler and freezer brothers came within about that much of fitting around the perimeter of that foundation that the Lord already had there waiting. He knew we were going to need that years before I ever knew we were going to have that. So when I ca- when I calculated where we were at the end of the day, we had enough food for over a month. That was like 9,000 meals. That's like the loaves and the fishes being broken up uh, and feeding 5,000 with 12 baskets left over. Amen. God does that stuff today, and he only does it if we're trusting him. And I'm, I'm watching him work that out right now in another way, and, and uh, I, I want to share that with you. Um, after 10 years, 1989 to 1999, the community where I lived, uh, my next door neighbor was uh, a business, a lady who had a business. And we always kept our property clean. Our people were very respectful. Uh, they, they helped out in the community. Uh, and, uh, and this lady was running for mayor of the city. And, and her focus was she wanted to shut the mission down. And the reason she wanted to shut the mission down her excuse were, we don't need those homeless people around us fine, upstanding citizens. They need to be somewhere else. And, and, but what her real, her real thing was that she wanted um, that property to be available so it could be taxed because we, as a church, we were not being, we were not providing any uh, property tax revenue to the city. Well, the end of the story was that she was successful. She used the uh, building codes to claim that we were a hotel and a restaurant, not a church. And she had a shut down. She had a shutdown, but she also lost the. Uh, she also lost. And so uh, God's provision, the lesson He gave me in provision, stayed with me. I went to. I had uh, about ten children um, staying with me at the time that. Um, didn't have parents, including my own kids. Um, and so we had uh, all together probably about 14 uh, teenagers down to young children. And we moved uh, out, had to leave the property. We were evicted by the by the law. And they turned our power off at the beginning of summer. And we had to go through a whole summer without any electricity. Um, there, It was just, <clears throat> they were just, exercising force to get their way, walking by sight. Well, we ended up in Galveston, and I had been in business before. Uh, I went into ministry, and, and but I felt like I needed to stay working in ministry. So all I had was a bicycle, and I rode the bicycle down the seawall to where the Salvation Army was, which is another homeless shelter on Galveston Island, and I would go minister to the people. <clears throat> But the Lord called me back into business. The very next week, I got a phone call from a, 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 a supporter of ours who said that the Lord told him to buy us a car. And then yeah. I got a call from someone who offered me a job to come back into business. And with all of those children, I needed a, a way to feed them. And I felt like I was still called to ministry, but the Lord took me back into business. And yeah. And he took me back into business as a, an officer for an engineering company. Um, operations primarily was what I did. And, <laughs> and I, I, I was confused because I read the Bible said the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And before I got the job, I, I went out to the beach and I, and I told you guys this, and I'll probably tell this a million times before I go home to be with the Lord someday. But we were, uh, I went out to the beach where we had rented an off-season apartment, and I I was praying and I was angry with God for shutting the the shelter down. And I was I was a young man; I was forty years younger than I am now, and uh, I I I just I said, Lord, um, what you did was wrong. I was criticizing God, 
And so God looked at me and understood me in my heart. He said, uh, okay, what do you want? And, and what I really wanted is I saw how those homeless people responded to Christ. I saw when we made food and, and shelter available and the kindness of God. And, and then we served up the Bible studies every day and the preaching service every day. Most of those people who came to that shelter, guys, came to Christ while they were yeah. there. Some of them experienced incredible miracles, which is why I was confused about why, why the Lord allowed the shelter to close. And, and then I said, Lord, uh, I, I would like um, billions of dollars and tens of thousands of volunteers because I want to put an end to this involuntary homelessness. I think some people choose to be homeless because they don't want to be responsible. They don't, they don't want to work. They, they just want to, they, they're caught up in sin. They want to do drugs. They want to do alcohol. They want to engage in all kinds of Ill, Ill, illegal and immoral sexual activities. And, and they make themselves be homeless. And God still calls out to them. But I, I, I prayed for that. And, and the Lord said, okay, that he would provide that. And then he took me back into business a week later. Here we are, 20, almost 23 years to the month later. And here's what the Lord has put in my hands. And I've been faithful. I've been, I've been in, I've been in ministry uh, for several years. It was praise and worship. I was a praise and worship leader or part of the praise and worship group. Uh, occasionally, I would give a word. I would just serve. I would go clean the bathrooms at the church, do the janitor work, wherever the Lord had for me to do. And then He opened up this door for me to come out here and pastor about six, seven years ago. Uh, yeah, but I've right. stayed in business. And what He's put in my hands, I want. I want to show you, um, it, it's kind of amazing. Um, and let me see here. This is, <clears throat> if it'll come up for me. Sometimes I get cooperation and sometimes I don't. Let me see. There is uh, the technology that the Lord's kind of, this put in my hands um, is uh, see if I have it here. Oh, okay. This is what the Lord's put in our hands. Right. This box um the, the scientist the, who's a Christian, Dr. Bilodeau, invented um, something called a synthetic phase change material. Ice to water to steam is a phase change material. And, it, and it's set at, at specific temperatures. At, at zero degrees centigrade, frozen becomes liquid. At 100 degrees centigrade, water becomes vapor. What he has done is he's created this synthetic phase change material, which can freeze, melt, or become vapor anywhere from minus 40 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So what happens is this box, uh, most of it is chunks of programmed ice. And as the, as the heat comes in, it becomes semi-liquid and stores it. And then there's another box on the inside. On the inside of that box is a turbine and some liquid synthetic phase change material like water, but liquid. And it, and it can become vapor wherever Dr. Bilodeau tells it. And it drives a small, low-pressure turbine. And, and, uh, and what we're able to do is collect the heat from the sun and run it through there. And if we do that in, uh, in a, a latitude-longitude of Southern California, that's um, about 20 megawatt hours of electricity from that box in a day. Now, I'm looking at the Lord's opening doors for us to be able to scale this down and to, um, and to do some other work with it, to do, um, to do what I hope to be able to do within a couple of years with you guys. Yeah. And that is, um, that, that long section of curved mirror, uh, we'll get a shorter section of that, probably about six, six to seven meters long. 
and a box um, about the size of a large shipping trunk. And, and we could, in your village, create a 50 kilowatt power generator that costs zero. It, it will maintain the, it, it will last for decades, even a century with just a little bit of maintenance. Um, and what we hope to do is to take those boxes and with the help of the walking church and others, um, and, and we're about two years away from being able to do this, but we'll be able to provide those boxes and, and all that will be on the equipment is, um, is a base plate that says Jesus. And then it'll say, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I don't want credit for this. I don't want any company to get credit for this. I want Jesus to get credit for this. And I want people to come to Jesus. But it'll also do other things. Sometimes you you can be around communities and, and the water is not good to drink. Well, you can use this high heat in this technology to purify the water so that you're not drinking, the people aren't drinking polluted waters. Um, and, and so what the Lord has showed, <clears throat> what he showed me at the shelter and what he's showing me now is that humble, practical demonstrations of the kindness of God will draw people to Christ. Amen. Just as Jesus was walking the earth, he, he, di he didn't, he didn't, blow trumpets and have people beating drums when he laid hands on the sick and they were healed. He just humbly went about showing the, the power and majesty of God. And so this is where we're kind of settled as th this is Isaiah 55 verses 10 through 12. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed to the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. God, brothers, God has empowered us in this last day these last days to be his witnesses to, to be to carry out the, the kindness that he would have us so this this brother that i was telling you about who's in africa who's taking care of orphans i i got like 20 texts in a row pastor are you listening are you hearing me? we really need help we really need help and and i and i and and i i'm just going to say that the flesh part of me what wanted to go Stop acting like the world. Stop letting the circumstances dictate to you. But what I did was I prayed, and then I, t I said to him, Brother, just like I said to, to, to Mary, I said, Brother, you are a son of the Most High God. You are a son of the King. You are not a beggar. Amen. Please go to the Lord in prayer. Please trust him. He can move my heart. Your begging doesn't need to do that. Amen. And, 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 and I, and I, I'm saying that. And as, as the Lord was, the Lord was showing me something about the cross that I had not seen before. And, and we had, I think we quoted this scripture last week, but it's, uh, if anyone be my disciple, let's see, do I have it here? Here it is. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone, any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. But if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? So I was looking at that. Take up your cross and follow me. And uh, I don't know how much you guys um, are familiar with, um, with, with history around the Mediterranean, but there was a time when Greece hundreds a couple thousand years ago maybe or maybe 15 1800 years ago greece attacked troy do you ever remember hearing about the trojan horse in history yeah yeah did either of you ever hear that story 
Okay, so what happened, Greece attacked Troy for like four years. They were in battle. And, and then what they did was they built a horse that was huge. And why did they build a horse? Because Troy, even when in the communities and countries around didn't have horses, which were valuable, extremely valuable for trade back then, especially, <laughs> um, Troy had horses. So the Greek army built them this massive horse and they, and they left it outside the gate of Troy. And when the Trojans got up that morning and they looked out, they saw the Greek ships sailing away. They'd been there for five years, but they were sailing away. And then, and then they went out and they, they were, they thought, well, we won the war. We chased them away. They bring this horse in. Well, the horse is full of Greek soldiers. And not only that, the, their Greek soldiers were hiding in the hills around, and they all came in and they attacked Troy and overcame it. So this is what the Lord showed me. He said, my cross, that cross Jesus carried was his purpose and destiny. And the only way you can carry that cross is by the strength of the Lord. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes, me, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to walk on, on the heights. Jesus was carrying out his destiny, and he was carrying a cross. In the mind of Satan, Satan thought he won because Jesus was going to die. And, and Satan thought he won. And what the Lord showed to me is he said, Mike, the cross was my Trojan horse because it was disguised as death, but what it really brings his life for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves and and when we go out and and we go out with meekness and what i did with that brother is i corrected him and as i corrected him the lord said now give him twice what he asked for and i said okay because he needed to hear the word but he also needed to know that the Lord was there for him. That's why Jesus says, does it do any good if somebody comes to you and asks you for, for food and you say, be warmed and filled and have a good day and you don't give them anything to eat? Jesus is telling us there's practicality in the mission that we have. There's practicality in the destiny and purpose that we have. That's why he said to us, if anyone would be my disciple, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, pick up his purpose and destiny, the purpose and destiny embodied in the cross that, that the devil can never beat and follow me. And, and, that's, and that's where he's called us. And I, I just wanted to, to let you know uh, today, uh, be encouraged. He has you on the mission field with all the equipment that you need. Um, he has tied our hearts together. You're as much a part of my congregation as I am a part of your congregation because we're all part of the body and, and we're here for one reason. And that is not any would perish, but all would come to. Amen. So um, my word for you today um, is deny yourself daily, pick up your cross and follow him and trust him. Uh, trust him. Like I, like I'm watching you trust him right now. Do you know, do you know guys um, so many pastors would have just said, oh, we don't have a building. We can't have a church. But you guys said, no, we're the walking church. What do we need a building for? Well, God's going to bring buildings. He's going to bring other things. But the fact that you just didn't, just said, okay, we're the walking church. We're going to go out and bear testimony of Christ. Um, I celebrate that, and I know the Lord celebrates that. Also. So that's my word for you today, guys. And any questions or comments or conversation? Uh, first, uh, first and foremost, let me uh, thank you and thank the Almighty for giving us this uh, humble opportunity to connect with the three of us. Uh, I think uh, I have uh, uh, noted down the most important comments that you are teaching us today. And among them is that the main point is that we human beings, we Christians, we should never uh, put trust in human beings. That the moment we put trust in human beings, that means that we have lost focus. 
تبنى فيها التجويف That means that at any moment, whenever we feel like tired, whenever we feel like something is wrong, what we need to do is to kneel down and pray to God. That through that God will intercede and actually everything, every situation in our life will be touched. So we are going to encourage others that uh, at any moment we should not keep on begging, we should not keep on uh, putting our trust. Of course, we know that at some cases God uses people to bless us, God uses people to touch us, but you should not be able to pressure that person to do so. If God feels that that, that thing you are asking for, uh, that favor you are needing for, if God knows that in, in, uh, really you need it, he will touch that person and that person will help you without even begging. So that is the most important point of that. Number two, I have uh, picked another point that we should pick our crosses and uh, go and uh, follow Christ. That is the very, very message you have shared today. And actually, I can categorize that that is the main important message I've noted down today, that we should pick our crosses and uh, follow Christ. Uh, because uh, the Bible says that I uh, come to me, all those who have been pardoned, and after you have uh, come to me, I, Christ, will give you rest. That is a very uh, sure message from the Almighty God. That's a very good message and a very straight one that whenever we feel tired, whenever we feel that our pardons, you know, in this case, our pardons mean so many sins. Sins can be uh, adultery, can be drug abuse, can be fornication, uh, can be uh, lying against the spirit. Uh, there is a lot of sins. We are living in a sinful world and each and every day the Bible says that there is no righteous man under the earth. So we should keep on uh, repenting, we should keep on forgiving, uh, uh, seeking uh, uh, forgiveness from God, as well as forgiving others. Because what the, the Bible says that if you cannot forgive your enemy, you cannot expect God to uh, forgive you. Number two is the message of Amen. love. That we should practice love at close. We should not uh, put boundaries that I, I want to love this person and stop this person. We should love all people squarely because the paper has commanded that this is the greatest commandment. Love God and love your friends, love your enemies. The paper says that, uh, you, you know, I like how the people put these messages. They are very sequential in a such that number one, the love is the is the biggest commandment. Is the uh, is I can say is the biggest request God has uh, requested us to do. We should love God. Number two, when you read the Bible, the Bible says that you cannot claim to love God if you don't love your brother whom you have seen. A very categorical mm -hmm. question. That means that the people has challenged us that if you are, uh, if you cannot truly love a brother whom you have seen, how can you claim to love God whom you have never seen? So it's a big challenge that we should start right away from loving our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our old, old grandmothers, old fathers. We should respect them. Then we should later on claim to love God because that's how the Bible lays out. So it is indeed a very strong message. And uh, unless uh, maybe I give my brother a chance, uh, I have a question, but I, uh, this question comes. Let me <laughs> Let me prepare this question to you, Pastor. Uh, there is a very big challenge we are undergoing right now. Uh, the challenge is, uh, we are, once we are doing our churches, I want you to advise us how we should go about it. Once we are facing people, you know, we are doing our church, does not, we don't have any building, but we are working. That is the genesis of the word working church. We are walking from houses to houses, streets, villages. So what we are encountering is that uh, uh, the moment we encounter the first person, the second person, the third person, these people live in different places. The moment we are in the tenth person, actually, when we are going back to the first person, we find that the first person has gone astray, has actually forgotten the message we shared with him. That that very day when we meet that person, he really ded dedicates his his or her life to Christ. But whenever we move away, this person again goes to the old ways. So I've been praying for this. How can we? Uh, 
how can we keep these people moving that they should not uh, they so that they cannot go backwards to the sinful world so how can we keep them moving you know uh, it is becoming a challenge because uh, when you compare pastors uh, like having a church uh, you can control people because you are sure you will meet them every sunday or every saturday so in this case this is a person whom we meet at random cases now, how can we control these people so that whenever we are preaching, we are sharing the, the word of God, they cannot go back to their old ways? That is the question for today. As you digest to... I understand. Uh, and... Okay. Go ahead. As you digest to give us a uh, response... Our, our, our. Uh, the... the uh, I understand it's very similar to what I face here. I will see people who come to church and then, and maybe they'll come two or three times or they'll come for a month and then I don't see them again. And, yes. and, and it's very much the same way that you're experiencing. Uh, and, and so what I do is I do what a shepherd does. I, I go find them and check on them and 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 see how i can help them take the next step um i i have uh there's a there are three people that live out where i live and i'll share a little bit about them one is a lady who is probably in her uh 50s early 50s uh late 40s she's still married to a man who lives hundreds of miles from here they've been going through a divorce for years She's chosen to live with a man who's several years younger than her, who has a criminal background. And uh, his, his mother is a drug addict of many, many years. And they'll come to the church and I'll preach to them and I'll teach them and I'll go see them. And they'll, they'll call me and say, Pastor, we don't have any food. And, I'll, and I, I don't have, I, uh, I have to go down dirt trails and and upsides of mountains to get to people i, mean, I don't live in a, a city i'm out in the, in the in nowhere so i'll go and i'll love them and i'll carry the things to them and i'll pray for them and that's all i can do uh as you continue to do what you're doing not only are you to be his witnesses but you're to make disciples so my suggestion to you as you go to these areas and and you and you make contact that while you're there, um, since you're, since the walking church is functioning differently than what we do, where we have a building where everybody comes to, you're going to have to make a way, even if it's not every Sunday, but make a way periodically on a regular basis to get to them or, or get to a central location where they can come to you. Uh, but that the discipling work has to continue. Now, as you, uh, one of the things that we can that we can play around with a little bit is technology, but that's going to be if they're connected. And if they're not connected, if they don't have a way to get, uh, we could buy like um, very inexpensive tablets that have Wi-Fi that you could use if it were available to be used over there. And I wouldn't mind purchasing those and, and having a Bible downloaded on those. But that's only going to work if people have electricity and access to. Uh, I'm just throwing out ideas right now. Um, we will continue. I want to get some additional resource in your hands for buying Bibles. Uh, but a, a lot of what where you are now, it's like with me, uh, the Lord's given me a couple of different assignments right now. I'm supposed to be remaining at the congregation where I am as an elder and as a pastor, but I believe more as a missions pastor. The Lord has called me to go look for a pastor to come in and be the lead pastor at the church so that I can focus on the mission work that he has me engaged in with you and with, with other people. So I, I like, I, and I want to just say this. I love, I get, I get to, I go to the church building on Sunday an hour and a half before anybody gets there because I want to spend time alone with the Lord. I, I love the, the, the hundreds of times that I've gone up there on 
Sunday morning and turned everything on and gotten ready. And, and a part of me wants to continue to do that, but then the Lord's calling me to walk by faith and not by sight. And, and so what, what I'm saying is it's a lifelong process with you guys, with each of you and with me. And it's a lifelong discipling process with these people. And I want to help you find a way to, to, to take the new converts and help disciple them so that they'll be, they'll be soul winning Christians themselves because the end of a disciple is a disciple maker. Yes. So, Pastor, I can I say thank you again for those uh, wonderful insights you have uh, given us. Uh, we understand, uh, actually, um, you know, uh, I know that the picture you might be having in your, uh, in your mind might be a different picture of uh, from where we come from. Uh, Pastor Kenya is a very wonderful country, and uh, each day we pray that uh, whenever and wherever God gives you this opportunity, you feel like uh, you 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 are okay to come. This is a wonderful country, uh, very safe. Uh, I I want instead to welcome you over so that you can uh, manifest among the people and uh, see for yourself. You know, we normally say that uh, uh, facing the pool face to face with horns so that you can see the situation how is it uh, uh, yes. Kenya yes you know the reason as to why we can say Kenya is a bit backward is because it is being run by a very corrupt system of government and uh, that's where in Kenya past that this is a country where you can find a politician owning a chopper which he doesn't use so you can see the irony in that statement. He doesn't use the chopper, but he, he owns that chopper. But the chopper is actually parked in his home uh, every now and then. In Kenya, this is where you can find a politician owning fleet of cars. A person can own, and this is very expensive machines, Range Rovers. We are talking of the eight vehicles. A person can own even 30, 30 fleet of cars. That's a politician. And you wonder. Why can you own to all those vehicles? And in your area of fraternity, there are so many people sleeping hungry. Why should we focus more on becoming wealth than focusing more on doing what the Almighty God wants us to do? So uh, we are praying, Pastor. Uh, I understand uh, that uh, there is so much challenges in uh, being a disciple, but we are ready for the task. No, we decided that we are not going to let this go down. We are going to use every means possible to see that uh, we have drawn many souls closer to yeah. the Almighty God. That's our ultimate goal. So uh, uh, we know right now there is a lot of things who you are working, uh, like uh, getting us uh, tablets, uh, I mean computers and phones. Indeed, it will be a blessing to us because it, it will even enable us, uh, you know, like even whenever you are sharing someone see, through YouTube, so I actually subscribed to your YouTube channel, so I normally get posted on every f video you post. Uh, we cannot store those videos in our phones because of the poor quality, because of the small space right. they contain. But uh, I know maybe when God wants us, you will send the phones, the computers, and we have a long way. We will have a lot of facilities to store these files inside our computers. We can uh, refresh them. We can uh, maybe we can uh, memorize them over the period, and I think God will replace us. So uh, this is one thing I have been thinking about, but uh, this can take a long uh, while, while you pray over it, you know. Uh, there is some request, Pastor. Uh, let me say this today. I don't like making a financial request to you because whenever you see me asking for money directly, that means that, that we are in a situation whereby it has forced us to tell you. No, we are preparing that we should focus more on trusting to God. And through, you know, I understand that even when we need something like no, uh, the case when you share the case of maybe preparing to build a store for us, it is a thing that we have been praying, but we never told you. 
but you told us before we told you, you know, there is some things where uh, some things happen miraculously. We have been praying for it uh, to have a place where we can have a decent home, a very good, a, a very good place where, by, where even if you store your things, your food, you are assured that they are very safe and the people can access them easily. But you, we never told you, but you told us before that. So that's how God works. That if you pray with the trust and faith, God will happen, will, will actually uh, give you away. So, Pastor, uh, we have been praying because we deal with so many people. We we go far away. Sometimes, if you suppose you send us some funds, they uh, the funds might be running for three to four days. So, uh, I have this uh, plan. I have this prayer that we, as the working church. Uh, maybe even in future, God places you with your church, we get uh, given like a motorbike, you see? Uh, a motorbike, I think uh, uh, with the time that we bless us so much because it will enable like now, like in this case where I told you that we need to check, to keep on checking on these people. Because, you know, Pastor, uh, like when a student is learning in school, you know, it is the results that keeps the motivating this pupil. Now we as the working church, if we preach to a given person today, and after several weeks, three to four weeks, we find that this person has, has gone back to his normal ways, to his sinful world, then at the end of the day, we might be questioning what are we really doing if we can't keep control under these people. So uh, like now, on the oh, issue of sure. checking, of checking uh, upon these people, I think like uh, having a small means of uh, a moving, moving around like a motorbike, I know it is costly, but that is a wrong plan. I think it will enable yeah. us now to access these people more easily than maybe walking. I want you to understand. Uh, I, I mean, I mean this in 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 the in the deepest sense. The Lord has knit our hearts to you. Uh, we are we are one with you and what you want to accomplish, and so as you need resources, um, I, 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 however any however anyone asks um, or brings a, a need forward, um, I I always want to point them back to the source, the true source, which is the Lord, and you guys already know that, but but I want you to understand it's my heart, and I I had a. Years ago, I had um, a uh, a business associate from Kenya, and uh, I know a little bit about your country. And I know I know that uh, I'm looking forward to coming over, and I think in 2024, at some point, I will. Um, yes. We have to. I have a few things I need to get in order here, as the Lord gives me <laughs> capacity. But I I want you to be able to get around, and as you say to me. Uh, Pastor, uh, here's here are our plans. This is what we see, and this is what we need. Then, just like when you talk to me about the phones and the computers, I can go to the Lord and say, Lord, th I, I'm standing with my brothers. They have this need. Please show us how we can help. And um, and I I definitely would like to see you get a motorbike um, and, and any any other tools that you need. That's what I'm saying to you. If we one of the one of the things that we can do you were talking about uh messages is we can buy these tablets as long if, if people have an ability to charge them up we can load sermons and messages on those tablets you can load them on there and you can leave them with the people and it, the, the, the tablets don't cost that much they're inexpensive as long as they have a way to charge them uh, um, they would be able to then see that that work and and as you spend time because your 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 model is so much like going back even to the apostle paul i mean you you're you're doing what the original disciples did you're going house to house village to village so there's some logistics in terms of managing the discipleship that you need to be able to address and as you find out, as you identify those logistics, you bring them to me and you say, Pastor, this is what we're seeing. This is what we need. Then we pray. And then the Lord may say to me, 
you know, Mike, they, they maybe a motorbike would do, but maybe they need something a little bit more roomy so that they can have some passenger space. I don't know what the Lord has in mind, uh, but I do know this. This is what he told me, and I found him to be 100% accurate. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. He, he just wants us, if we're tagged into this, Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I, I want to be there. We want to be there with you. Keep your heart focused on him. Love him. Trust him. That's what I'm doing. And however we can help, that's what we want to do. Amen. Amen. I think that's a very wonderful uh, thoughts, Pastor. And, uh, you, uh, you know, I normally tell you that we sometimes try to emulate the deeds of Christ through you. Because, you know, Pastor, I like how you normally uh, answer questions. And the more important that is that whenever you receive a request, the first thing you, you do is to pray to Almighty God so that he can reveal to you what to do. I think that's a very wonderful way of doing things. And we are practicing uh, doing that. And we hope that the people we lead uh, actually are doing that exactly. So I think uh, that's good for today. Unless otherwise, maybe the last uh, question, which is, uh, is not that much uh, uh, specific, is to see how far are you with the phones and computers. Yes. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, uh... I'm excited. Um, I'm watching the Lord do some very amazing things right now. And, and, and what I know is every, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from, from him. And he, he wants us to receive them so that we can be more effective in making sure that none of the elect are lost, that all come to Christ. And uh, and however we can be there, that's what we want to do. Thank you guys for your time. Brother, you were going to say something a little while ago, and then I, I spoke over you. Did you have something else you wanted to share? You're mute. You're on mute. Sorry for that. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, I was saying uh, the issue that uh, we wanted to address, I think my brother has already done it. So mine is just to say that uh, we've had a very good uh, session today that uh, <clears throat> our needs should not, uh, should not guide us. I think that is the main thing that what we need should not guide us. We should at least have trust in God. We should not trust in uh, our fellow human being, you know. That is how the Bible has put it. And that when we want uh, to ask for something first, we should put it unto the Lord. So that even if we get we give it to the second party, the first party should be God. You involve God in, in anything that you want before you take it to your to your brother. That is the same thing that my brother said. Uh, previously, we've been uh, asking ourselves, brother, <clears throat> how long do you think we can uh, run this ministry if we don't have something uh, that is so much central that will identify us that if you go to some point, that is where like uh, an office of the working church. So we've been having that in mind. Like if someone urgently needs to see us for some urgent reason, where will he find us, he or she, he would find us because not all of them that know our homes. So we are thinking, how will God help us have a small structure that will act as a, a meeting point that you are very sure if I go there I'll meet the two guys there so we've been asking that but it's very fortunate that God brought that message to you before us we did so we are very happy that that message yes. came to you through God not through us so we are really grateful and we are hoping that uh, God is going to open ways so that we will realize that plan you know, in everything that if you set a goal and you achieve it, you will feel very much motivated. So if we achieve that, I think it will leave us more energy to go out there 
and we'll we'll giving exact place that in case you have an emergency, come to a certain place, you will find us there. End time, end reason, just come there. We'll share with, with you with the, what the Lord has, has in store for us. <clears throat> and uh, about uh, about the phones and computers, I think my brother has said about it, that if we have that, it will help a great deal. You know why? For example, <clears throat> there's a time the rains maybe can come in so we can connect my brother apart, you apart and me apart. We'll connect through Zoom. We can connect the three of us but using yeah. different devices. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, the rains really disturb. Yeah. This month of August, we're, exp we're experiencing a lot of rains. So if in case we have some good phones, we can connect the three of us, but from different uh, points, having the same message. And, and yeah. uh, about the YouTube... I like it. Yeah, about the YouTube uh, subscription, uh, the kind of... Uh, the kind of phone I use, I think it's the the the, the phone that I, I I could have actually subscribed to you the your your YouTube, but uh, the kind of phone I have, I'm sorry to say this, can't allow that. You know, so if uh, you could have that, you know, it will help us follow your proceedings in your church. Yes. You know, it it will help us. This uh, apart from us meeting and sharing the word of God, we'll have a chance to follow your sermons in church and we'll pick a lot of things from there, then we copy them and we'll get uh, more disciples. No, as my brother said, the the, 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 the ultimate goal for this uh, walking church is uh, gaining more disciples to God. That is the ultimate goal. Amen. So if you have that chance Amen. to follow your sermons and get some uh, teachings from there, we add them the, to the ones that we have on on one-on-one, uh, -on -one. I think it will, be an, it will be a plus to our ministry. Amen. So I'm really praying that uh, Amen. God may open ways and we have the computers and phones. Uh, God this time, that is, you know, you know, God has his own plan. We may plan, but God makes the plan happen. So we are praying to God to, uh, to give you a breakthrough and you and your church to give you a breakthrough so that we can have them in good time and help us yes i think the the, the yes. most important thing that we needed them so that they can help us expand our ministry amen amen and here's, here's what i want you guys to do this is uh it's the the word says without a vision the people perish and you guys have that vision and i'm i'm getting pieces and bits of it right now an office a central place a gathering place and the lord already showed me the pantry i was thinking about transportation but now I'm hearing that you're saying it too. So, so, so what I'm believing God for is establishment. Establishment in, in every area for the walking church to be able to optimize the disciple making that God's called you to do. And, and what he's saying is, he's saying this, just because, this is the Lord speaking, just because I provide a place for you. Do not stop being the walking church. Amen. Because there are only people that will see me through you when you go see them. Yes. In yes. Jesus' name. Father, I, I just pray for my brothers. I pray that you give me wisdom. Lord, I'm yes. humbled to be able to serve these men as they are on the front line, seeking you first in your kingdom and your righteousness. Father, yes. as they're seeking after those who, who are lost without you, so that they may find eternal life. Father, there are those who have learned so urgently and desperately to cling to the things of the world, the things that they can see. But Father, those things will perish. I pray, Lord, that their hearts would be set on you because you never change and you're never going away and you'll always hold our hearts in your hand. Father, I pray, give us, give us your vision Give us your vision for yes. the walking church. And Lord, help us to do, help me to do from our side, whatever we can do on this side to fulfill that vision. And Father, I pray as it, as it, as it is manifested that all of the glory and all of the praise and all of the honor 
go to you because you are the word you are the worthy one you are the one that's causing all of this to come to pass and lord we thank you in advance for the blessings because what your word tells us hallelujah in ephesians 3 20 is that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask think or imagine according to the power that you've deposited in us Amen. father i speak your blessing over these men, over their families, over their ministry, over their loved ones. And I thank you for the privilege of, of being connected so that we might serve in getting the gospel to the people who need it the most. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brothers. I will be seeing you soon. You know about, I believe we've got it this week. Uh, we've got the... Uh, uh, capital coming in uh, in just the next couple of days, so we'll be able to get the computers and phones over to you. We'll need to make sure we have the right shipping address, so make sure I have that. And uh, I love you guys. God bless Amen. you.